Hello and welcome to Easy Projects. In my latest video I explained how stepper motors work and I took one apart to show how it looks inside. But then a few guys commented that you know by taking the stepper motors apart they will uh, lose some of their torque because when you pull the rotor out of the housing something happens to the magnetic fields. And so the rotor would lose some of its magnetic torque. I haven't actually heard that before with hybrid servo motors. I had heard it with uh, some servo motors and permanent magnet servo motors, but uh, then another guy commented that you know you shouldn't take them apart because they will lose torque. So maybe there's something about it, even though I never heard about it. I have taken some apart earlier and uh, I didn't really notice any difference, but let's uh, do a test and see what happens. So to measure the holding torque we can uh, apply a tangential linear force uh, that will rotate the rotor. The force has to be perpendicular to the radius and since we're using gravity that will always face down so we will just make this horizontal. And by knowing this distance and the amount of mass that we put on here we can calculate the torque. So to do that I made this piece of wood where we can put the axle of the motor and then clamp it tight. Then 10 centimeters from this hole we have another hole with a string in it and we have this lit from a spray can. And then we can use these uh, calibrated masses to put in here to make a very scientific test to see if this motor has any less torque than this motor. So I'll just keep adding these nuts until this uh, steps over like that and then we'll know that's the maximum holding torque. We can then weigh this lid here with the nuts in it and we can calculate actually we can just read on the scale what the uh, Newton meters is because because 9.82 newtons would be one kilo on a stick on a meter. Uh, since we shorten this to 10 centimeters, we'll need 10 times the mass. So that will be one kilo per newton meter, roughly, because it's still uh, 9.82, but I don't really care about the last bit. And since we're doing the same for both motors, we can still compare them. The number will just be a little bit off. So, should we start with a good one? I marked a, uh, an X on the back of this one. And I've taken this apart more than once. Uh, first I did it uh, before I made the video just to see if I could get it apart or if it was stuck too good together. Then I disassembled it in the video. And after that I disassembled it again to get the uh, thumbnail for the video and also the, the last scene in the video. And I also got the uh, rotor misaligned once so I had to take it apart again. So it has been taken apart at least four times, I don't really remember. So this is the motor that I did not take apart and I've connected it to a power supply that can give us a constant current of 1.7 amps and that's what the motor is rated for. I just took the power supply off to one of the coils and the other one is left open. And we'll do the same for the other motor in a minute. So I will attach this and I also use the power supply as a counterweight on the motor so the motor won't just uh, spin on the table or move or whatever. So if we keep this horizontal and we turn on the power, you can see the voltage is 3.94, we'll remember that, and we'll start loading this. By the way, I don't know if I mentioned, but uh, the motor should be 0.4 Newton meters.
so that should be around 400 grains. And I can see it starts to flex a little bit, or it starts to give a little bit, I should say. Oop. I couldn't take that one. Yeah, so it just holds this, and if I add one, it doesn't. So, let's put it on the scale here. So, oh, you can't see it, but it's uh, 326 grams. So we didn't get the entire 0 0.4 newton meters, but we also have the mass of this wooden block here. It's not much, but it's still uh, some grams. And these come straight from China, so I'm not saying anything, but sometimes they make it sound a little bit better than it actually is. So we'll take the one with the X on it. I'll just remove a few. It should be able to to take at least some of it. This is, it's a little bit off. We should do better than that. So, that's better. So we'll see if this uh, fails sooner than the other one. There's still uh, quite a long way to go. And I don't really feel it uh, trying to do much. And now it starts to... Yeah, there we go. So that was uh, so it does hold this, but it also holds that. No, it doesn't. Oh, it slips on the axle there, but it didn't do that before. So. Yeah, okay, now it doesn't seem to hold this weight anymore, so I'll remove one of these and that should be it. Now, I don't remember exactly how many uh, were in here before, but it looks just the same, I would say. So, let's see. So that's 316. So, what was the other? 320 something. So that is almost the same. Uh, one of these weighs around 10 grams, I think it is. Yeah. So that's actually within the margin of error. Uh, I could get some lighter ones and test it even better, but I couldn't be bothered. 
I do have one here that is another brand and it's uh, supposed to be exactly the same motor. Uh, I'll just test this now that I have the system set up anyway. So that's no good. So that was 224 grams, so 0.22 newton meters. And this one should also be 0.4. So apparently no name Steva Motors will be lying more to you than uh, what is this? Long's Steva Motors. So these were only 25% off, where this was almost 50. But uh, well, this other one wasn't really what we were here to test. I did also test the other coil of these motors. So uh, that would be the black and the green wire. And in that test they did uh, exactly the same weight, uh, within 10 grams, because I didn't use lighter weights. So from what my tests can tell, uh, my stepper motor uh, didn't take any damage from being taken apart. But of course I can only speak for myself, and there could be something to it. But it could also be, as another guy commented, it only applies to permanent magnet motors. And the myth just carried over to these when they came around. So I don't really know, but I wanted to test it because I didn't want to use... No, it's not that one. Because I didn't want to use the motor if if it has lost some torque. They are not that expensive, so I would just have bought another one, but this is still perfectly usable. I still do not recommend everybody to take them apart, though, because uh, the second time I had to put this together, I had quite a struggle getting the rotor aligned inside the, uh, the coils, uh, because it gets stuck on the... yeah. The course, you know, if you saw the tear down with the with the taps on it, the tolerances are very tight. So uh, the first time I didn't really have any problem, but the second time it, I think it took like 15 minutes to get it aligned again, and uh, so it doesn't bind up when I spin it. So if you don't really have a reason to, then don't take them apart. It can be quite a pain to put them back together again. So that's it for this video, and if you liked it, please give it the thumbs up, and thanks a lot for watching. I will catch you soon for the next one. We have to get these installed in the 3D printer also, so that will probably be the next thing. See ya!